Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a preview of our Reading Royals playing yet again the Newfoundland Growlers as they take on the Newfoundland Growlers tonight. As the standings sit coming into tonight's game, 13 and 2, no overtime or shootout decided games for the Growlers. Where of course the Royals have five of those four overtime decided games and one shootout decided game. And as always, if you enjoy the content of Special Thanks to 169 that have subbed already, please sub. Easy to use widget at the end or at the subscribe button down below right now. But 13-2 and two of the Growlers through 15 games, even set of games played for the Growlers and Royals. 6-4-4-1 four, and, four, and one for our Reading Royals who have a good amount of points, obviously, due to the five points they got from the overtime and the one shootout loss. Uh, they have 17 points to the 26, so they are nine behind the Growlers, so it's a pretty distant second. But obviously, if you take, which is not... <clears throat> The highest abundantly likely if you just look at percentages when you play teams three in a row over the time. It's not like in baseball you consistently see series sweeps just to use that analogy. But um, when you have 26 to 17, obviously the Royals, if they do win all three, would be at 23 points and only three games back, or not three games, three points back of the Newfoundland Growlers which would only be two games, so they can really turn the tide this week. And even if, obviously, you win two of the three games, that still is really going to help propel you in the standings to be a much closer second place than where you're at now and really push you in the confidence bunches to be able to show just how much you can compete with, obviously, that ridiculous top-level um, Newfoundland Growers team, but our Reading Royals are a great team as well. That's why they're in second place and three above Trois Rivières, who they did not fare against well last week, but did have a very good final game that, like Pat said on the broadcast, I agree that they kind of did deserve to win more than Trois Rivières. And then Maine, who was the other team they did not fare against well this season, of course, losing 4-1 to one. Yeah, four to one in against the Maine Mariners, as um they have 14 points as well, so they're three behind the Royals, so if the Royals have a good week, they can further their distance in second place as well, and try to become a more distant second place, just like Newfoundland right now is a fairly distant at nine points first place, but you can really lower that, winning two out of three, and my realistic expectations going into this week, because I really do believe in this Reading team and the goaltending, they just need to play better defense, and they obviously didn't have 5-1 and 9-1 tilt against Trois Rivières, who really is picking up their play all be it too as well since they started their season. They're a new team. It took them a little bit to get into chemistry. Now that they have, uh, that team kind of is going to in the right direction and has the potential to be going places in their first season if they keep playing in the way that they're playing currently in their tilts. But when you look at the Newfoundland Growlers, it isn't no secret who your key player is to watch, and that is Zach O'Brien, who has 21 points. He's one of the league's best players in 15 games already. 14 for Marcus Power, 13 for Gordy Green, who obviously scored a key goal the last time we played the Newfoundland Growlers. And then Santanza, you got to watch as well. And then a guy that I talked to with Chris, the announcer of the Newfoundland Growlers, while I was there covering the game for Nitty Gritty during one of the games against the Growlers. Nathan Knoll, who's a very fun player to watch, is playing nine games. Not when he's against us, obviously, but when <clears throat> um, he's playing other teams, because he's a very pesky type player for people that watch the Flyers as well. He's a guy that's able to score the puck, but also is like TK that's going to piss you off as well within the game. So that's something to look at and see how he plays this game. He played a very solid game the last time we played the Growlers, in my opinion. And then when it comes to goaltending, Petruzzelli, I believe, is back down now. Obviously, he's been their top guy. Uh, he has a 1.6 goals against, 9.52 save percentage, one of the league's better net minders. That's for Dan. Sure, Keith Petrozelli, who has four wins in five games. And then uh, Evan Cormier, who really did take the team under his wing after Petrozelli did get the call up and really did play well. 2.38 he has um, in his games. <clears throat> he started, he has one um, shutout win, it says, as well. So he's playing really well and has nine wins in only ten games played. So that's obviously really ridiculous of a total to have five and four. Both of their goalies only have one um, win less than the amount of games played. So go figure why this team is doing so well. And Cormier is a very great young net minor. Me and Chris were talking about that as well, where you had to see a little bit more from him. Well, now you did see it. 
and he was going off now when he had to step up for Petruzzelli being out. So now you have potentially, if not the best, one of the best, that's for sure, in Newfoundland goaltending tandem. So the Royals are going to have to go up against that. And then when it comes to the Growlers defense, um, <clears throat> Pietro Nero, um, Pomerley, and then Capchick are the uh, best guys to watch on their defense to keep your Eyes out for number five, Capchick, number seven, uh, Petra Nero, and then number 18, Pomerlay. And when it came to the forwards, 10 is O'Brien, just so you guys can keep an eye out on the ice. Power is nine, Gordy Green is 19, Sintanzo is 29, and Nathan Knoll is 16. Where for goaltending, Petrozelli is 35, and then one number below, 34, is Evan Cormier, if they decide to give him the nod. Now, moving on to our running Royals, obviously the players to watch are Jacob Pritchard, Braden Lowe, and as always, Frank Tachara. On defense, as always, David Drake, the steady Eddie player who's been mo moving up like Dylan said in the Brook, has in the rush a little bit more lately, which is fun to see. Obviously, Dominic Cormier, who's also been good on defense as well, is another guy that I would say is to watch on defense. And then, as always, whoever is in net is always going to be a player to watch. Um, for the Reading Royals, whether that has been Pat Nagel with nine wins in five games in his time with the Royals, Hayden Hawkey, who has a win, a good game, and then an off game, and then Karo Ustamenko, who has been up and down, but has really kept the Royals in certain games, and is coming back off of a major injury, so I still have faith and believe he's going to be a hell of a goaltender if it just takes time to come back off of that injury. So whoever goes for the Royals, since I didn't even 100% realize he was back down, but it has him on the roster listed here on ECHL.com. Nagel, Hawkey, Rustamenko, I believe in all three of our goalies, and as Kirk McDonald said, you can't really have backup goalies in this league. You have to have guys that you just really rely on and can go to. Newfoundland proved that with Cormier. Um, against Norfolk, Hayden Hawkey proved he can do that, and obviously Kirill, we already know, if Pat Nagel eventually takes the range again, or does starting tonight, then he's able to be a very good backup goaltender, as well as a guy in Hayden Hockey, I believe will be a very solid third goaltender at that point. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe and go Royals. Let's start with a win today against the Newfoundland Growlers. Peace out, everybody.